Intel finally announced new processors, but they're Xeons and kind of reskins of what we already have. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. So Intel just announced the new Xeon E2100 processor family. All 10 of the new processors are pretty much carbon copies of the current Coffee Lake processors. You got your copy of the 4 and 6 core i5s and your 4 and 6 core i7s. I guess the main difference here is ECC memory support, oh and 40 PCIe lanes instead of 16. I mean when you compare them they're so similar. A regular 8700K with 3.7 gigahertz base and 4.7 boost, 6 core and 12 threads runs you 350 bucks this Xeon version 362 I mean just include ECC in your i5s and i7s in the first place eat the cost and maybe you won't be startled when AMD makes a move some of those models do offer a slight improvement in clock speeds compared to their i5 counterparts but it's nothing a little bit of overclocking couldn't fix now I don't know why I'm so frustrated with Intel I mean they make good products but it's just annoying to see things getting rehashed and rehashed a thousand ways without seeing some crazy sales or price drops like AMD does sometimes. I mean, what do you think? Am I being a little bit too hard on Intel? I'm not sure. Moving on, sale of PCs just grew for the first time in six years. Six years, can you believe that? I mean, is it even impressive? I mean, what am I doing? There's no one here. Why am I looking to the side? All right, so the amount of growth compared to last year depends on what you consider a PC. The two research firms, Gat, Garten, Gartner and IDC, calculated differently. IDC calculated an increase of 2.7% and Gartner 1.4%. Now, IDC includes Chromebooks, but excludes Windows tablets and detachables like the Surface Pro, which makes no sense if you ask me. But Gartner, they count anything that ships with Windows. So before we continue, I just wanted to know what do you consider a PC? Since PC stands for personal computers, I mean so many things should count into it, like Macs, smartphones, but personally, I'd probably go with Gartner's way of calculating it since Chromebooks were only introduced in 2011 and didn't really become a mainstay until a few years after. Getting back to the growth, while it isn't impressive, it's at least good to see that it's not going down anymore. Now I wonder how they calculate custom builds, since I haven't bought a computer at a big box store in almost a decade. And now for a new segment I like to call, the future is here! Although we've seen it before, but it's just getting a little bit closer, I guess. Opener, not the noun, but the company that is backed by Google co-founder Larry Page, just revealed their black fly. While the name leaves something to be desired, the... <sighs> USA qualified ultralight all electric personal vertical takeoff and landing aircraft is pretty much impressive and also a mouthful. I mean, it's pretty clear what it does, as you can see from the video, but I wanted to talk about its specs a little bit. It can reach speeds of up to 62 miles per hour and has a range of about 25 miles. It's pretty impressive, although I wonder where you land. I mean, this can't really use existing infrastructure since airfields are usually further apart than 25 miles, and if you land, you'd have to do it someplace safe. Also, the range is kind of small, but what is impressive though is that they want the pricing to be about the same as a typical SUV. It's still well above my price range, but I'm sure I'll get a used one at a fair price when I'm what, 70? Moving on to some gaming news, We Happy Few just released a new trailer and I swear to God I love and I hate this game. I love it because the story and the world is so intriguing. The whole happy police, the downers, the experiments, the pills, it's so captivating. But then you see the bits of gameplay and it feels like a little bit cheap. Okay, maybe not cheap, but I feel like it's taking a lot of cues from Dead Island, both in the crafting and sort of the mechanics department. I hope that they prove me wrong. I mean, I haven't wanted to play a game like this since Bioshock Infinite. By the way, I recently found out that the game has been out on Steam Early Access for a while now, but I don't buy into Early Access Beta Alpha stuff. I mean, I just want the finished product, an Xbox One controller, and just play it for hours on end. And then we have Overwatch's war on toxicity in the game. It seems like the new looking for group features and endorsement system is paying off. According to Jeff Kaplan, the toxicity has been reduced by around 25%. Now that is pretty impressive. It makes sense though. Allow people to group up without being forced into a role or being able to give a quick thumbs up as positive reinforcement will definitely make the community better instead of focusing on how to better report people. There's always going to be toxicity in these kinds of games, but it's good to see that we can reduce it. 
And now to answer a question from you guys, and today it is, what is your favorite type of hardware? Do you like PCs, laptops, tablets, mobiles, phones, or any other types of tech. If we're talking any type of tech, I would definitely say cameras right now. Although it changes almost every year. Like last year, I was obsessed with finding a TV that would do 4K 60 Hertz with color sampling of 444. And the year before, I was obsessed about finding the right audio interface. I found one, it's the Scarlett 18i8. Thanks for your questions, and don't forget to leave one down below if you want me to answer something that you might be trying to find out about me. And that is pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and click right here to see the latest video right here. This is the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. It will be greatly appreciated. It's so hot in here. I have to turn off the AC to record and holy crap. It's like a sauna. Anyways, take care, guys. Stay frosty.